Okay, so the topic of this video is called Brownian motion. This is one of the uh, first evidences we had that atoms and molecules actually exist. Because, um, of course, it took a very long time before we were able to actually see atoms and molecules. We can see them now, uh, but only in very special circumstances using what's called a scanning electron microscope. But in any case, it's an extremely advanced tool that's got very limited usage. So basically, for, the, for practical purposes, we still can't really see atoms and molecules very easily. Um, anyways, this was one of the first evidences that scientists found that atoms and molecules actually do exist. So here's what's up with Brownian motion. All right, so I've got the subtitle there, Evidence of the Kinetic Molecular Theory, which we talked about in the last video. All right, so let's just, what is it? Well, let's go to the definition here. It's the random motion of particles in a liquid or gas which result from collisions, we think, with atoms or molecules that are in the liquid or gas. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at this little image. It'd be better if this was like animated, but it didn't work getting the animation into the video. So I'll kind of animate it for you. So these little guys here, all these little black dots, those are all representing atoms, which we could not actually see if this was um, an example of somebody observing Brownian motion. So this would probably be like air, air molecules or air atoms of air. So then this might be, this yellow thing might be a piece of smoke, which of course is very small, but it's much, much bigger than atoms. So you could see this under the microscope. So what happens is, in theory, all of these little guys are bouncing around like crazy all over the place, and some of them hit this thing. Some of them hit that smoke particle. And maybe more of them hit one side of the smoke particle than the other, and that causes it to move a little bit. All right, and over time, this thing's path is going to kind of zigzag around all over the place. And maybe later on, it's over here. So that's the basic idea. Um, what you might end up with is something that looks like this right here. Uh, if you were to track the pathway of this particle over time. Okay, let's look at uh, a little bit more detail about this. So here I've drawn in some arrows. Um, we'll go through this pretty quickly, the rest of this. Um, just to summarize, basically what we're talking about is that very tiny, fast-moving atoms and molecules can work together to cause a large enough force to move a much larger particle, this guy right here. All right, so all these little guys here represent little atoms that are hitting, say, this side of the smoke particle here. And then the, let's say this is a split second right here. We've taken a, like a snapshot picture, and these guys are all hitting that side of the particle. Well, most of the collisions then are on the same side of the particle at this split second, so the particle is going to bounce off in the direction of the resultant force, All right? So over time, that causes these random jumpy motions of this smoke particle, which you could observe with a microscope if you had one. All right, um, and then here, just one more slide to help you visualize this. Over time, if we were to plot the positions of a particular smoke particle, then we might get something that looks a bit like this. All right, random pathway of a particle that's bouncing around inside a container of air, um, or possibly it's like little floaty things in some water. Same kind of thing happens there too. If you've got little particles floating around in the water, you might see this kind of random path motion there. All right, so that's basically it. That's Brownian motion. So, and Brownian motion was the one of the first ways that scientists were able to tell that atoms and molecules do actually exist. So, pretty cool.